PGP is hard. Let's go shopping. Your comments on email encryption and webmail. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Team. Like Darren mentioned back at the beginning of the show, we have gotten a lot of emails about PGP. Yeah. And you've also gotten a lot of text messages about this? Apparently well, right. you gave out your phone number or no, something? No, no, that's what I did with um, Hack Across America. If you've ah. been watching the video blog series, you know that I've been having text conversations with awesome people about really cool cerebral stuff, and that's why I love this. That is kind of cool. Because I can just pull my phone number out there and be like, yeah, let's chat. I'm a little, well, I did just get a work phone, so I could give out that one if I really wanted to. Or you could just call her. Her phone number is 510-865. I don't even know. That's not even your well, code. Well, you started getting there. Oh, really? Yeah. It is 510. Ha ha. See? War dial. <laughs> In 100,000 phone numbers, you could be on the Good phone luck. with Shannon. <laughs> so let's go ahead and start it off with a text that you got on that phone. It said, the problem, and this was from somebody in Virginia, apparently. The problem with PGP is that I can't get anyone else to use it. It needs to be built into Gmail and transparent to the user. And I... Yeah. I absolutely it's gotta be easy and wholeheartedly agree. What if we've been talking about the fact that security and privacy is not convenient? And this is one of those things where, as we've talked about with this extension, it's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. Practically speaking, this is really easy to do. And this technology has been around for 20 years. So why is it not implemented in every except every single mail server that we could ever have? Think about this. With like Gmail as an example, perhaps, uh, how do we get Gmail for free? Well, because Google sells ads against it. Yeah, you know, you get that true. email about that wedding, mm -hmm. and then suddenly on the little right-hand side, you get the I little... get stuff about weddings all the time, and I'm like, hmm, they're reading your emails. Okay, except look at your GPG emails, or sorry, PGP emails. What do those guys look like? <laughs> That's me reading a PGP email to the one there. They don't you know can't. what kind of ads to sell to you. No, yeah. No. They don't know what to sell. They can't sell ads. Yeah. If you really want to get tinfoil hat too, you could just be like, oh, you know, the, the privacy and the government and the emails and the, it's not in their corporate. Damn them. It's either not in their corporate best interest or who knows what else happens behind closed doors. But yes, that is the problem. It's a chicken and egg thing. So what we have to do is be eggs or chickens. That's right. I said be a chicken. <laughs> I'm not sure which one came first, but we need to be, be the one that does. Yeah. We can start. We can start a trend. It'll be the new popular trend. Is yeah. oh, you don't have PGP. Oh, dude. Who all, are you? All of my tweets now are in AES 128. <laughs> so so we also got a lot of texts that said, uh, and emails that say things like uh, the problem with key servers is spammers harvest your email address for, from them. And the yes. problem with key servers is that you can't verify the authenticity of the key. Is yes. you can't remove your key. Everything. Okay, so those are all legitimate concerns when it comes to key servers. Uh, same kind of concerns with like guest books and anywhere else that you put your key, or sorry, not your key, but your email address publicly. Yeah. Um, I've heard some interesting solutions about having like CSVs emailed to you with the public key of the person and the things and the, oh, that's even more complication to the matter. So, yes, spam is a reality. Um, it, to be honest though, I feel like spam was kind of dealt with, or at least, I, I don't know, I use like a system of whitelisting and priority stuff and a lot of heuristics in any way. Mm -hmm. I also rely on Gmail heavily for that stuff. They do a damn good job. Um, so it absolutely is an issue, And but without it, you have to deal with the whole key exchange issue. So again, this is a prime example of convenience and then like privacy and security. It just, yeah. It's a balancing act. Uh, the problem with key servers is that you can't easily remove your key. If you go to the MIT one, I tried to do mm -hmm. this because I, I, I think I showed my key for dkitchen at hack5.org, which is not my email. It's just some alias I use when I sign up for stuff and I need some throwaway. But anyway, um, I created a PGP key for that when I was testing out some software, and that was just with a 1024 bit key. So, as you can imagine, um, there, since all of the different key servers, replicate. Yeah. There's no real easy way for me to send an issue over to, uh, since anyone can publish a key in there, what's to say, what's the authentication mechanism yeah. for removing a key? And the key server at MIT does have a mechanism for doing that if you do a revocation certificate, which is not some, Really? <laughs> you still need your private key to create this, this certificate, okay. but you can't do that from Mailvelope. Um, and 
even if you were to do that, it would only remove it from that key server. It is propagated, just like DNS propagates throughout the internet, to the other key servers. Oh, uh, yeah. So, yes, that's that, complicated. That is a problem because then somebody gets your old key and maybe you lost your private key mm -hmm. or you're no longer you're using it. This is why expirations are good when it comes to keys. I don't have True. a perfect solution there. SSL uh, certification. Yeah, there, there was, <laughs> we can touch on that in a sec. There was another one about. Um, how uh, you can't verify the authenticity because anybody mm -hmm. can publish a key to the key server. So I could put That's true. I yeah. could put Shannon at hack5.org, this is her key, right? But it totally just made up key. Yeah. Well sure. Except she's not gonna be able to decode the message. Yeah. Because she doesn't have the other half of that key. And um, I mean I guess unless you're intercepting that message, in which case Bob's mm -hmm. your uncle. But the way that I see it, um, I think that's taken care of by signing, and we can talk about signing in a bit here, but unfortunately, it's totally not supported by Mailvelope, like I said. this. Yeah, so didn't you say you had a problem with Mailvelope and I've been ad having, blocks? Yeah, in fact, actually, I'm, I'm having better luck now with it if I just keep refreshing uh, my Gmail page when I open a PGP message, just means uh, hitting F5 a bunch of times. That's kind of annoying, though. It is a bit annoying. This is why I've moved to Enigma with Thunderbird, and we're going to get into that here in a bit because it's Ooh. not as complicated as it sounds. That sounds fun. Uh, and there is something really nice and something to be said about owning your mail on your computer and not in somebody else's server. But um, who knows what storage True. policies are done with these web mail providers anyway. So ultimately, what are you going to do? Run your own mail server on your own VPS or something? And then now you oh, have totally. to ask the question, I mean, do you trust your so VPS simple. provider? So one, it's convenient to security, and then the other is eventually you have to trust someone. Trust no one. Well, then you're not going to have very many friends. <laughs> That's true. Now, we also got a very long email from Saul. He wrote in with a link to the comp complete guide to publishing PGP keys in DNS. We should have that in the show notes. Yes. Good stuff. Yes, definitely. Now, it details how keys can be published via a DNS server, eliminating the need for key servers. Uh, Saul says, personally, as I don't roll my own DNS, I use the PK PKA record method, as it's all I can fit in the TXT record and then point to the URI of my MIT public key. Of course, this is just because my public key is already held there. I've previously had the URI point to public key keys sat either on my website and even in my Dropbox uh, public folder, although I didn't like the link between me and my Dropbox ID being obvious, so soon drop this idea. Pointing to MIT is the nicest I feel. I think the idea of try trying a key Tying a key to your email address via DNS is very elegant. If services like Mailvelope ever implemented automatic lookup of public keys in the DNS based on your intended recipients, it would be re it would really make PGP accessible. Security concerns aside, of course, but if you can't trust your DNS records to have your real public key, you probably can't trust them to control your MX records. So yeah, and this is the same <laughs> thing. Funny. It's like you're mitigating trust, and ultimately, I mean, what you're talking about is really cool. However, I have a feeling like the discussion about you know why isn't this just built into Gmail if it's that simple um, is you know is, is Google going to go ahead and allow, give everyone a text record or a DNS record mm -hmm. for their PGP keys as well it just doesn't seem feasible this is great for us that roll our own to say like you know I'm actually Darren at hack5.org but I've got this Gmail account yeah um, you know it's great for Darren hack5.org and I did the same thing like you were talking about you just put it up on you know hack5.org slash key slash Darren yeah. slash key slash Shannon um, we could do uh, shannon.hack5.org, make it a text record. Um, and, and that does a decent job of you know, verifying the validity of that key because right. you'd need to be the webmaster. Did mm -hmm. I just say webmaster? It's 1998. <laughs> and I said webmaster. However, hello, GeoCities. Yes. So uh, thank you for sending that in. And check out that article. It's really interesting. And that is. Yeah. Definitely one. Uh, I love that this is creating so much uh, uh, discussion amongst the community. Oh, yeah, community. there's tons of conversation we, about like, it. Like right before Air just got one, this guy is working on this Python script to create a PGP based Twitter thing using oh, cool. Pastebin and other. Oh, it's wicked. I That's love awesome. this stuff. So, yes. Uh, what else? All right. Our next one comes from Michael. He says, I love the idea of this PGP and would be fully interested in doing this. However, I need to be able to access my email on my Android phone. This is a good one. He said, my dad is stuck on Internet Explorer. He doesn't like Firefox or Chrome. Is there any kind of webmail PGP for IE? Well, there are some webmail providers that claim to support PGP on their end and basically the private key is held on their server and all of the stuff happens 
in the cloud, as it were. <laughs> uh, I'm personally more of a fan of an unhost unhosted solution, mm -hmm. and we're going to be touching on some of this stuff. I'm not even going to mention any of these service providers because I don't think that is uh, a right way to go. I mean, again, talking about mitigating trust and all of that, it's just like a VPN, and you're just moving, yeah. you're just offsetting the security to another exit point or yeah. whatever have you. So, um, no. Okay. There's, unfortunately, and this is why we need to become chickens. Uh, if there is, there's no good answer for your dad, unfortunately. And to answer your question about Android, uh, it's K9 Mail and AGP, which oh. haven't been updated. Well, K9 Mail has been, but AGP hasn't been updated since 2010. It is open source. Oh, wow. uh, and we're going to be talking about how to set that up. I'm trying to find cool. a concise and I could simple do that on way my to break Nexus. that down. Yes. That's awesome. That's the idea there. Um, it's trying to make it as convenient as possible. Yeah, I hope so. Yes. <laughs> it's ready for a Technoless photo of the week. I am so ready for this one. It comes from Oren. He said, here's a picture of some of my home setup. He has an awesome setup. I love the quad monitors. Ooh. He said, a Windows 7 quad screen system flanked by a pair of Macs. Oh, Max. I have to use those for work and they drive me nuts. Now, having the 3840 by 2160 is great for the search and rescue map work idea I do oh, so cool. when I'm volunteering for the Civil Air Search and Rescue Association, the C-A-S-A-R-A. -A -A. I think that's totally awesome that he yeah. volunteers for something like and that. That's excellent. That sounds like a wicked use of technology. Oh, it totally so is. So thanks for sending in your technology. You can do yeah, the same you. thing by emailing photos to feedback at hack5.org. You can tweet them at us too. Yeah. How about I like trivia? Tweets. Trivia. Last week's trivia question was, what is the true statement regarding WEP cracking? Initialization vectors are small, or are they large? They get reused frequently and are sent in clear text, or are they sent in encrypted during in, uh, transmission? And the answer was, IVs are small. They get reused frequently, That's and they are sent in clear text. Also That's the problem, problem, huh? Yeah. It's What's your stuff. take on that? You gotta collect them all. They're like Pokemon. Once you get all the <laughs> IVs, cracky cracky. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's good to know as well. Now this week's question is, what is another term for turning off the SSID broadcast? You can answer that over at hack5.org slash trivia for your chance to win some swag. I have a feeling Dragorn and Kismet would know. They anyway, probably do. <laughs> we'll be back after this quick break. You guys know how I feel about the mobile phone experience. It's so cluttered and confusing, all these powerlessness. You're basically at the mercy of these phone companies who have these plans riddled with you know, hidden fees and steep penalties, arbitrary rules. I couldn't care less about them. However, I have just found an awesome phone company. Trust me, as a former phone freak, it warms my heart to say this because it's run by a bunch of cool geeks. They're frustrated with the status quo and they did something about it. It's called Ting. And they're a new service that brings clarity, usability, and huge savings to the mobile phone network. It's so cool because they built it on the Sprint 4G network. So it's got, you know, it's the first MVNO with LTE devices. It's got awesome Android phones. I have six Ting devices now, amazing customer service. Like you call them and they, they literally just answer the phone. You call and boom. Uh, my sister switched over, I've switched over, all of my friends are switching over. It's really the greatest. Uh, and so I just love this. I'm so passionate about this because they're actually doing something innovative. Let me tell you about this. They're one simple plan that offers fair and honest pricing. That's what I love. Megabytes, minutes, and messages are all billed separately. So if you use less than you expected, well, then you're credited the difference. And if you use more, then you're simply billed the appropriate amount. There's no premiums and penalties. So get this, hack5.ting.com. This is a special website they've set up. They've got an online calculator there where you can already see how much savings you're going to get. Plus, if you go there, just as a Hack5 viewer, you're gonna get $25 off most Ting devices or $25 towards Ting service just for being a Hack5 viewer. And you know, I have to thank them because, I mean, I just picked up a, another Ting phone, another! I have six now. Uh, this one's going in the van on Hack Across America to power our GPS tracking. It's, it's just so simple with Ting. So check it out at hack5.ting.com. Also, we'd like to tell you that we value your feedback. Every last comment gets read. E feedback at hack5.org. If you have our public keys, you can just email us individually, or you can just comment on our Google Plus uh, community, or yes. even here on Facebook. Or, did I say Facebook? We're not on Facebook. Are we on Facebook? Yeah. We're probably on Facebook. We are on Facebook. I'm on Google I Plus check the Facebook YouTube. daily. Um, She's on he's the on face. There. I'm on the face. Twitters, Google Pluses, and the YouTubes. I'm on friend face. Internets. <laughs> you can go to hack5.org slash follow. We have links to everything there. Also, he's doing Hack Across America. 
America. I, I'm, I am all across America right now as we speak. So follow the adventure at HackAcrossAmerica.com. It's on the Hack5 homepage. You're going to see all the good stuff. And I hope to guys see you in Portland on the 25th and Eugene, Oregon on the 21st, I want to say. In, no, 22nd. In Seattle on the 29th. <laughs> And Los Angeles on the 22nd of June. Yes, and I hope to see you guys at Maker Fair on the 18th, that Saturday, whatever that boom. Saturday is. Boom, get yourself your iCal or whatever it's called and the clickety-click and then boom, you'll know. And you'll be like, hey, Tara's driving by. Uh, and I'll be like, honk, honk. It'll be good. Yeah, maybe I'll join you on the road sometime. No, nah, it's, it's only a one-seater. No? No. Yeah. Yeah, I took it's the second seat out so it won't seat you. Oh, man. Yeah. That stinks. I, know. I could drive my car. Yeah. I could be like, hey, Darren. No. Darren, wait Speed. for me. No, won't wave. <laughs> <laughs> you can also support us directly through the shop. We have plenty of very cool gadgets over there if you haven't checked them out yet. Check out the Wi-Fi Pineapple. Why do, you, why do you not have one yet? They're amazing. All right. And with all of that, I'm Darren Kitchen. And I'm Shannon Morse. Trust you, Technolust. Oh, it's, it's doing the thing. No. Why? How's it doing? I did it! Sarah's back! Oh, hi, Sarah! Hi, Sarah! Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Solving problems. Plus 10 points. We got so much feedback from that P... H I keep trying to say PHP. PGP. We got so much e feedback about PHP and GPG and PGP okay. Okay. and HTTP. Okay. FTP and IRC. And FTPs and IRCs and HTTPs. And, 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 and FTPs. <laughs> Is this no? <laughs> Is this real life? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do it. All right. We got. <laughs> You're making a face. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. That guy? Stop it with the thing! All right, I'll put the thingy thingy down. Thank you. Ooh, what, what the? the <laughs> <laughs> you chipped it! Oh, I chipped the table. SFTPs, SCPs, WTFs, STFU, DNS, RTFM, RTMP. Oh! NNTP. Read that phablet. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, that's not what it stands for? What? <laughs> Oh, Are we doing a segment? Right, and three. Two. Get a little McGee over here. Yeah. I didn't realize there's a prairie dog. Meow, meow, meow. Okay, let's do it. <laughs>